Welcome inside episode 547 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan in the heart of our nation's capital in Ottawa, Ontario, alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains and is the final stretch, a back-to-back to conclude the season for the Ottawa Senators. They wrap up their 41 home games tonight against the Florida Panthers. And although the Belleville Senators didn't play recently, the standings in the North Division are bouncing up and down. It could be a good thing for the Belleville Senators. We'll get into that later. And unfortunately, the Ottawa 67s have been eliminated by North Bay Battalion. A clean sweep and Tyler Boucher's OHL season is over. Oh, you say OHL season is over. Could he be joining Belleville? We'll touch on all that and more. This is the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day. Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen on this Thursday. April 28th and Pilsy, how many bring G home signs do you think we're going to see tonight when the Sens take on the Panthers? 19,500. Does that sound about right? Math guy, that's uh, that's a full barn at the CTC. So that would be absolutely incredible. And uh, hey, you'll, you'll get to see your first look at Claude Giroux in Ottawa because that might be a sight you're going to get used to seeing next season. The site where he scored his first NHL goal, if I'm not Ooh. mistaken. Or no, played his first NHL game. That's okay. the, the stat there. I think he had a shootout attempt in that game on Brian Elliott. That's how far back you have to go there. But he's been on fire since joining the Florida Panthers. No spoilers for lookout player. But we'll get to a full preview of that a little later on. Now, the Senators are playing their 17th back-to-back of the year. That's almost half the games on the calendar. We know it's a weird year, Pilsy, but... That's a lot of hockey, and we're in that stretch. We talked about it leading up to it a lot more than when we're in it because it's been so consistent. You're on, you're off, you're on, you're off. They were going a 50-game stretch in 100 days. I'm shocked it hasn't started catching up to them because the wins are now starting to pile up. And especially, Ross, like that would be a tough uh, schedule for a fully healthy team. How about a team that's been ravaged by injuries and had to do emergency call-ups, replacement players are playing in the top six. It's been crazy. No, Like, all year, this team hasn't had two healthy, consistent goalies. That makes back-to-backs an absolute nightmare. But I will say again, we're giving the schedule makers a pass this year. It was an absolute gong show. They did the best they could. But going forward in the future... There can't be more, like, even 15 games is too many, or 15 back-to-backs is too many. Like, we got to have the over-under somewhere around 11 and a half, I would say, is a fair amount. And they all happen in this same stretch because when they canceled all the games there late December, early January, they went, I believe, from December 7th yeah. to late January without a back-to-back. They were yeah. playing They were playing maybe once a week there for a little while. If that, and now you're looking at going through where this is their third back to back in in a week, right? They went mm-hmm. uh, they went Monday, Tuesday, uh, Friday, Saturday, and how about and, a cross continental back to back going from uh, Ottawa to the West Coast? Like, sheesh, unbelievable, unbelievable schedule. No excuses though, and and they don't need any because they're winning. Pillsy, they've got their first four game win streak since 2017. Now they could win the last two. And it would still be that because that four game win streak was also a six game win streak in March of 2017. What's been most impressive to you during this four game heater? Tim Stutzla. I mean, Ross, we were at the game up against the New Jersey Devils on Tuesday and four points was amazing. He got a power play goal and his first ever shorthanded goal. Like as Tim Stutzla continues to develop here, he's he's becoming more and more impressive in my eyes. And I, I will... I will confidently squash my uh, my earlier idea saying that he's going to be a consistent 50-point guy. He's going to smash the roof on that. I think 50 points would be the absolute lowest I would expect from him in the season moving forward. And I, I can see him 30 goals, 40 assists consistently now. Like this kid is absolutely on a heater, especially since moving to the center of the ice. And now you got him killing penalties and not just killing penalties, scoring beautiful breakaway goals nonetheless. The sky's the limit for Timmy Superstar. 
great for the brand. Shout out mm-hmm. Wayne Scanlon, putting that in his article yesterday with Sportsnet, a friend of the show. And you mentioned four points. I don't know if anyone caught it. That's a career high. Never had four points in a game before. Yeah. He's he's had three points four times this year and twice last year, including the hat trick against Winnipeg, his first career NHL hat trick. So that's a lot of times where you're flirting with four points, but to, to finally get there and every goal mattered. It's a five, four overtime win. Mm-hmm. He's got points on four out of five of the goals, man. That is, that is truly a, a, an incredible accomplishment. I agree with Wayne Scanlon's article. It's the best storyline, not only of this four game stretch, but of the entire season. What's second to you? Cause I have one in my mind that that's right, right behind it. Okay. Um, I got a couple ways I'm going to go, but hashtag goalie friendly show. How about Anton Forsberg? I mean, the fact we we say it every time, Ross, but it it remains true. The fact that he has a winning record on this team is absolutely amazing. Like there's no, there's no way around it. And the fact that he's so consistent, DJ Smith trusts him every night. He goes in there as a fan. I'm confident they can win any game where he's starting. He's locked up for three more years under $3 million. Like the value there is just absolutely incredible. So Anton Forsberg for me has to be the story. And Ross, of course, we did get a great answer from uh, Ian Mendez about is he the best waiver wire pickup in sense history? And it was uh, Norm McIver, right? That's the yep. name Ian dropped. And hey, getting 63 points and leading your team as a waiver wire pickup, you know, we'll, we'll nod our hats to that. But it remains to be seen if Forsberg can be a number one goalie for four seasons as a waiver wire pickup. I think he takes the cake there. So we'll call it a tie for now. And as always, <laughs> great info by Ian. Yeah, of course. So that's good stuff there for me. And not only that, it's better stuff from Anton Forsberg. 21-17-4 with a 9-16 save percentage. And according to Hockey Reference, a 28 out of 43 of his starts were quality, which means an 89 or more save percentage with, or sorry, sorry, with better than the average NHL save percentage of the year on that night so that's unbelievable but to put that in perspective Gustafson has seven quality starts in 17 games so you you look at what he's been able to do keeping this team in the game he's got his glove hands just cooking this season all the windmill saves I can't wait for the highlight reel of that later on but he will get the night off he will play the final game of the season on Friday and this all ties into Belleville because Matt Sogard's hurt and it's an unknown injury right now we hope it's not serious but Philip Gustafson will start for Belleville on Saturday. So they wanted to get him in one more NHL game. He'll play tonight. He'll probably back up tomorrow in Philly and then go to Belleville for Saturday's game. Or maybe they call it Mando again. I'm not even sure if he's able to back up yet. I know he's been practicing, but um, the carousel in, in goal continues. And I think we mentioned it on yesterday's show. DJ Smith said they hope to get Matt Murray back, but neck and upper body stuff. Is uh, is he's not coming back? Let's the let's official just be diagnosis. That's going to be an interesting storyline to follow throughout the offseason, though. Has Matt Murray played his last game with the Ottawa Senators? Is there going to be a buyout? Is he on LTIR? Will he show up in shape at camp? Who knows? That is all to be seen. But tonight we get to see potentially the future in goal for the Ottawa Senators as Philip Gustafson had lost what was it eight straight games? Yeah, is that what it was? Eight straight. I'm pulling up right now. Eight straight. And in those eight games, he allowed 34 goals for an 857 save percentage. But since he's now got back to back wins, Woo! both on the road, both on the road, and both very solid 34 and 33 saves. And good teams, respectively. Too. Yes, absolutely. Well, I don't know if I call Columbus a good team, especially with the guys they had out. But, but not like bottom feeders, you know what I mean? Like teams sure. that are in the middle not of the Detroit. Pack here. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so all that to say, I'm excited to see Gus tonight. I think it's a worthy final start tonight. You want to get that save percentage over 900, right? He's been grinding out. It was very low before, and now it's up to 893. So a big night tonight. You can push that average up to over 900. That would be huge for his confidence going into the offseason. Ross, I'm a positive guy, and I'm cheering for Gus, but I would say the likelihood that he brings his save percentage up up against the best team in the NHL is probably not very likely. Oh, come on. Even though it's a team that's resting players tonight? Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> Even still? Yeah, sorry. All right, we'll tell you who the Florida Panthers are resting as they make their final visit to the Canadian Tire Center. A couple Ottawa boys in the lineup, not only Claude Giroux, but Mackenzie Weger as well. The Florida Panthers looking to secure the President's Trophy. So this is not a meaningless game per se, but if you're resting players, well, it's certainly not full of meaning either. The Senators have a chance to extend their win streak to five games. We're going to get into a full game preview, let you know what's going on with the 67s, including Tyler Boucher. But first, Pilsy, is, it's bright in there. I could see it, man. It's sunny in Collingwood. I know you got your Shady Rays. Oh, of course, Ross. And I was rocking my Shady Rays the entire time, my six-hour drive from Ottawa back to Collingwood. And they were keeping me uh, looking good and feeling good because not only are Shady Rays stylish, not only are they affordable, but they're also high quality sunglasses that maybe you're used to paying two, even $300 for this kind of quality. Forget that. Go to Shady Rays. You're not going to find, I cannot believe the insane protection program. You're not going to find this anywhere else. I promise you. Shady Rays includes lost and broken protection on every pair of sunglasses they sell. They'll send you a brand new pair if you lose them. No matter what happened, you don't need to have witnesses, you don't need to have pictures, you don't need to have a long story. They trust that you lost them and they're going to hook you up with a brand new pair as soon as they can. Give them a try and if you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. It's as simple as that. So there's no risk. If you don't like them, they'll bring them back. If they break or you lose them, you get a new pair. There's Timmy's uh, Timmy saying is no risk, no fun. Well, how about the Shady Rays way? No risk and fun. That's how you do it with Shady Rays. And I can't believe there's even more, guys. Every time you order Shady Rays, 10 meals are donated to Fight Hunger in America. So you're helping out less fortunate people. Exclusive for our listeners, head to ShadyRays.com and use code Locked On. You're going to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code Locked On for their best deal of the season. Summer's almost here. Get your Shady Rays, guys. 50% off. Two or more pairs of Shady Ray sunglasses backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. And I'll make that 150,000 and one verified review because I love Shady Rays and you will too. Check them out today, guys. Shady Rays. All right, Pilsy. So we should mention as well, if you want to advertise with Locked On Senators and reach a passionate local audience that wants to support their own, you should you should reach out. On Twitter at Send Central, on Instagram, locked on dot senators, or through our YouTube page. We hope you subscribe on YouTube, locked on senators. We've got another great interview coming for you tomorrow, which I will not tease until it there is. There you go, Ross. Recorded. There you go. <laughs> credit, to, credit to me. Yes. Credit to me. Um, and credit to the Ottawa Senators because they've turned their season around. And what do you say to the people who say, too little, too late? Who cares? They should be in the tank, they should be gunning for that top overall pick. This is just the same bad habits they got in last year where you make the games meaningless and then you win those meaningless games. I mean, it's it's tough to argue that because this is a second year in a row that this is happening. And last year, Ross, we, we were pretty fired up about the end of the season and thinking that momentum was going to carry on. Victor Mete, 50-point guy. Let's go. He's buzzing. Yep, Eric Branstrom was looking good. Uh, so there, there was a lot of optimism, and and there still is. And hey, I, if you ask me, Ross, do you want to finish the season with a six-game win streak or a six-game lose streak? I'm taking the six-game win streak every <laughs> single time. So I don't have a problem with that. And it's nice to end the year off with some smiles, as we did. And speaking of smiles, Ross, how about Team Photo Day? Ooh. The boys are looking good. Those Sharp. are some, some crispy photos of the boys. So. Bad day to be hair gel. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's fine that uh, that they're winning these games. And no, it doesn't really matter where the Sens pick. They're, they're going to take their guy, whether they're picking first or 10th. We know that. So I'm not caught up in that. And if you're cheering for losses, head on down to Arizona or Montreal <laughs> because uh, we don't need that here. Um, question. Will the Senators use their first round pick this year? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't think they do. No, I don't like that. I you think can't... Minnesota will be using Ottawa's first round pick. 
If it gets you Kevin Fiala, we're we're talking. Like I, I I'm interested, but it has to get you Kevin Fiala with an extension. Oh, of course. You you don't get you don't get him without. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting. But the, but the thing is, like, that's why I'm just saying that if they pick seven, eight, nine, I don't think it changes the value in a trade as much as it's just annoying to see Buffalo and Detroit teams that were ahead of y'all year them jump behind you, especially divisional teams. But I don't. I honestly don't think they're going to pick. All right. The only I'll, I'll say this: if it's for Fiala or a proven top six forward, not proven. a top six forward that had the worst year of his career and they're expecting a bounce back. Or if not that enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not a top six. Well, he was free agent signing, so, he, so he, they got a free pass there. For but sure. not a top six forward that has had health issues and he's going to bounce back this year. No, we're not buying low. We're buying high. Pay full mm-hmm. price for Kevin Fiala. Get him locked up to a big contract and hell yeah, trade that first round pick. But We've said it all along, Ross, and this is why I have pause to that conversation. In recent history, who do you trust more, the pro scouting or Trent Mann? Yeah. I'm going Trent Mann. So that's why I feel more confident about the Sens picking someone rather than uh, using it to acquire a veteran. But I, I'm salivating over all these Kevin Fiala highlights. Like, it, it's absolutely filthy what this guy is able to do. And if you could get him up um, with Timmy and Batherson... <laughs> Oh my God. Like the Sens would have an amazing top six, an incredible top six. And it would probably cost you more than that. To put it in perspective, he's got uh, 84 points in 80 games, plus 23, 52 pims, little grit there as well. And, and Ross, uh, what's, uh, are you on hockey reference right now? No, I'm not. I'm on. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to say, do the splits for first half of the season and second half of the season because his second half of the season has been out of this world. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pull Big it time. up. I am interested. And then we're going to touch on the Belleville Senators and Tyler Boucher. And then we're going to get into a full preview of today's game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since the All Star break, he's got 50 points in 39 games. And yep. then this month, he has 23 points in 14 games in, in the month <laughs> of April. So, yeah, safe to say he's and- heating up. And not just like greasy garbage goals or secondary assists, like highlight real plays night after night yeah. after night. Yeah. Anyway, so that's in case you're worried about falling back a spot or two. I don't think it's the end of the world either way. Even if they do end up using the pick, they're going to take their guy. And from what I can tell, this this draft is pretty up in the air. But you know that we're going to turn our attention to that very soon. We're also going to follow our sends abroad. Big hit for the sends abroad with the Vegas Knights officially eliminated from the playoffs. No Mark Stone, no Robin Leonard, although he was already out with surgery, so he was going to miss the postseason. Anyways, you know what? It's bad karma for a bad team who doesn't care about their players. Yeah, exactly. So, (laughs) yeah, yeah, fair, fair. Uh, Not like Anaheim was about to make it either, but we will have our full sends abroad list. You see Erica Branson's at like a 60% Corsi this year. I don't know if it's something in the water in Calgary or what, but that's going to be a hard team. To take out. There's going to be a lot of great matchups, and we're going to be your home five days a week, Monday through Friday, with a Sens angle on the postseason as we also prepare for the NHL entry draft and eulogize what was an extremely confusing season for the Ottawa Senators. Some some very high highs and November <laughs> instead of some very, <laughs> there was also November this year. So the Senator season might be over. Belleville sends still underway. They play on Saturday. Pilsy, tell us what the situation is, where they can move up, and how it would affect them going into the postseason. Okay, Ross, after some revisiting, I, I've recalculated. Remember yesterday, we were like, oh, or at least I was like, oh, maybe you want Laval to win one, then Toronto, and then Belleville beats uh, Toronto after. No. You want Toronto to win both of these games, and they did win last night's game. And Regulation? Uh I think regulation. I didn't look at the game. I've just been watching the standings and the nice. standings, Ross. Actually, no, got to be regulation. Yep. Oh, yep. OT, OT. Oh, damn. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> um, but look at the winning percentage now. The Laval yep. Rocket now sit at a 0.579 and Belleville is right there. Ross, they're clawing up to Laval just like that guy in the painting behind you trying to climb <laughs> up that cliff. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll understand that. But they're just 0.2 behind. Belleville sits at 0.577%. So, like, it is damn close. So, if Toronto wins again tonight 
and then Belleville wins. There it is up on YouTube if you're watching at home. If Toronto wins in regulation and Belleville beats Toronto, they're firmly in third place and they get a bye so they won't have to play that play-in series, which would be awesome. And what's even better is it looks like Aaron Dell and the Rochester Americans will be the odd man out. So, hey, revenge is a, bit, a dish best served cold. And Aaron Dell, no postseason game checks for you, my good friend, as his season looks like it's coming to a screeching halt. Good on the Belleville sense. Will Tyler Boucher go to Belleville? I'm going to ask you on the other side of the break, Pilsy, and then we'll get into a full preview of tonight's game. Today's show is brought to you by Bet On. Line Bet Online has you covered with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. At Bet Online, you'll have access to all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, and even fun props like where the next fired coach is going to land. The NFL draft is tonight, so go check out everything at betonline.net. Head to the website today. You can also use your mobile device, very responsive on mobile, so you can go there and learn more about the trends and action. It's betonline.net where the game starts. All right, Pilsy, so the Ottawa 67, sweet shirt, not to brag, thanks, Mackie. But what we've got here is a situation where Tyler Boucher is out of the, out of the postseason in, in the OHL. He's already signed his entry level. So I saw some people on Twitter say he'd have to sign an ATO and go there. No, once your season is over in junior, you can be reassigned to the, to the AHL. No problem at all. I think you can even be assigned to the NHL, but that one I'm less sure about. 100% the AHL. Ridley Gregg could be the same, although Brandon did win last night. So their series nice. is now tied at two. Still no point to Ridley Gregg and like way too many. How many, pim- pim- how many pims? I think he's got 12 pims in four games right now. Yeah. Classic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's neither here nor there. But what we do know is that Tyler Boucher's season's over there. Even if he doesn't play, I hope he goes to Belleville, practices, becomes a black ace. If I put the question to you, will he play a game? For the Belleville Senators this year, would you say yes? So just so I understand correctly, if he does play a game with Belleville, can he go back to the 67s next year? Yes, he can. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to say no. I, I want to say yes, but I think what would happen is he would be a black ace because, man, that lineup is clicking. I don't, I don't see anyone that really is like an eyesore on that forward lineup and needs to be taken out of there. I think... Maybe you want to give Tyler Boucher a bit of a rest here. Get him around the guys. Get him feeling uh, what uh, AHL experience is like, even though he's kind of already had a little bit of a taste there. It, it beats him just going golfing now, right? Like the season's right. over and he's just hanging out. So definitely get him in the mix. But if, if, I, if I'm if i guessing Troy Mann properly, I don't think he would just toss him in there. Like a, that's, a, that's a tough <laughs> task. Like an OHL guy, he's only played a handful of OHL games and now you're throwing him in an AHL playoff game. Probably not going to happen, even though the fans and myself included would love to see it. Right, but if, it, if Ridley Gregg's in the same situation, he plays. Yes, 100%. That's a totally different scenario, right? Like Ridley Gregg has played multiple seasons in the WHL. He's an, an older player. He's got more experience. He's dominating at junior. He's played for Belleville too. He got seven games in before the WHL started back up. Exactly. So uh, that's a whole nother conversation. And if Ridley Gregg ends up uh, finishing early, I could see him getting a spot in that lineup. One guy who will not be finishing or not be coming to Belleville, Carson Latimer, still in that prospect phase. He'll stay with Prince Albert, but he had an assist and they got the win against Winnipeg. Lies. So they are not being swept, although they lost game three, 10 to one. They were able <laughs> to win three, one in game four. So they're bringing that back to Winnipeg for game five this weekend. Uh, whereas, uh, yeah, that's Ross, pretty that reminded me of, um, uh, who, who was it when Winnipeg leaves and the guy says, we're bringing the cup back to Winnipeg. Who, who made that big speech when they, when they left, uh, I can see his face so clearly. People are mean? probably smashing. When the Winnipeg franchise left, how you said they're bringing it back to Winnipeg, I just had that speech in my head when the franchise left. And uh, who was that player? Anyways, Wait, this is they left Winnipeg? Track. So when they went to Phoenix? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. No and idea. In front of that crowd, he gave that speech. Anyways. Neither here nor there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I can tell you is losing 10-1 in a playoff game is absolutely wild. Yes. But good on Prince Albert for ba- for bouncing back. Everett also defeated the Vancouver Giants last night, although I don't think 
that Austin Chuck will be turning pro either. Although he is signed, so he is a guy who they could move if they wanted. He yeah. could be a guy who would go to Belleville. But hey, I keep the, him in junior a little more. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. They can all go back after. So it's at the point where you just kind of, if you want them to get more experience, why not? It's a year that last was such like a lost year for prospects. Why not get them around the guys? But I don't think we see Austin Chuck in a game by any stretch, but I just don't think it can hurt to have as many black aces as yeah. possible. So bring them all in as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there is only one game in the uh, WHL playoffs. So uh, Ridley, Greg, Carson Latimer, Austin Chuck, they're all back in action on Friday. Okay, let's get to the Ottawa Senators. They are 6-1-1 one, and one in their last eight games. They're beginning their final two game back-to-back of the regular season. Game 81 tonight against the Florida Panthers. And let's start with the opponent, the Florida Panthers. Their record is 57. Yes, 57 wins, 17 losses, and six overtime losses. Now, if I was a hater, which I'm not, I'm firmly on team win the cup Florida so that Claude Giroux gets his cup and could come home. But if I was a hater, Pilsy, I would bring up the fact that Despite being first in the National Hockey League in points, they have two more points than Colorado. So as I said, not a completely, not a completely nothing game tonight for them. They only have 41 regulation wins, Pelzi, which puts them in seventh in the National Hockey League. Does that worry you for them going into postseason play that they haven't been dominating the same way? Like Carolina and, and Colorado have 46 five more regulation wins than Florida. No, it doesn't bother me because I'd be interested to look at the splits before and after the trade deadline, right? When you add Ben Chirot, you add Claude Giroux, and I feel like they added one more guy. Maybe not, but those are two major pieces that were added to this lineup. So maybe if they weren't getting it done with um, the reinforcements, but I seem to recall a 13-game win streak in yeah. recent history. So I don't think they're struggling too hard to uh, to win games here. Pilsy, I can tell you they've got nine regulation wins since the trade deadline. It's not not first by any stretch. It's actually, um, it's a tie for fifth, but it's like a seven-way tie for okay. fifth. So out of their 15 wins, nine of them have, have been in regulation. So anyways, just something to think yep, about. Definitely. Something to think about. And this lineup gives you lots to think about as well. If you're watching on YouTube, we've got it pulled up. It's Alex Barkov in between Carter Verhage and Claude Giroux. How many 115-point players play on the second line? That's Jonathan Huberto at left wing with Sam Bennett and Anthony Duclair. The third line is Lois Reinen, Achari, and Reinhardt. And the fourth line is Joe Thornton with Mammon. And Patrick Hornfist on defense. It's Forsling and Weger, Sherratt and Montour, and Carlson. No, not that one. And Robert Haig. Spencer Knight starts in goal. And let's begin talking there because the last time <laughs> he faced the Ottawa Senators, Pilsy, you ate to see it, but it was a big 8 2 win for the Sens. An eight spot. I mean, Arasa, as tendies, getting stuck in a game when you let in eight goals is tough, but I kind of respect it because, Hey, sometimes you got to clean up your own mess and you don't always get to get pulled out of situations and have someone else clean it up for you. So Spencer Knight, that was certainly a learning experience for him. Cause didn't he get demoted the next day? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that was something where he had to look in the mirror and be like, all right, I need to change my approach here. I cannot have the Ottawa senators scoring eight goals in one game on me in the future. If I want to be successful. So It's going to be interesting to see how Spencer Knight does uh, tonight. I think we're going to see a much better effort. And, Ross, you mentioned the Panthers were resting players. Who who are they resting? That looked like a pretty sick lineup to me. Yeah, no doubt. They're resting um, Aaron Ekblad and um, Lundell, their stud rookie. Ah, okay. Yeah, and and Marchman, I saw, isn't in the lineup, but he might be injured. Yep, there you go. And not only that, but also um, Sergei Bobrovsky. Like, they called up for this game. Spencer Knight. Right. Okay. So that just like how sick is this team that they have all those players just not playing. But if you're Florida and you and you've uh, got things going pretty well and you're playing Ottawa and Montreal as your last two games, that's probably a smart move. 
Yeah, no question. But you do want that President's Trophy, right? It's it would nice. be their first one in franchise history, right? It has it to be. It has to be. It yeah, no, be. for sure. Yeah, I'm not. there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. No, but I want to see where where their best finish has ever been. Have, have Got to be the Beret years when they went to that Cup, cup well, Final. Well, they went that to the Cup Final. Guess. They went to the Cup Final in their third year as a team. But you know what? They've only finished first in their in the the division twice. Yeah. And they lost in the first round both times. They haven't won a playoff series since they won the cup. Or sorry, Been a sorry while. since they made the cup final. Yes. They lost in the final. That's 1996. The only team with a longer drought than the Toronto Maple Leafs <laughs> for winning a playoff round. And Toronto doesn't even get to go up against these guys. They got to take on Tampa, which is going to be a super fun series. Of course, sends abroad. We're going to be all over Nick Paul in that series. I love you, Spez. Not with the blue and white. Sorry, buddy. Nope. My hate for the Leafs okay. supersedes wanting to see you. Brian Elliott, too, sends that. abroad. There you go. And I want to say Freddie Clayson's going to be one of the, the black oh, aces true. there. Yeah. Yeah. So you love to see that for, for, her, for a team that's going for three straight cups. And why not at this point? Just embrace the dynasty. Let them get their uh, their third in a row. I think it'd be great for the game. But for tonight's game, should we do the Sens first? or No, our lookout player. We just went through the Florida Panthers lines. Who do you have? All right, well, if you're tossing it to me, I'm taking the easy one, Ross, and it's future Ottawa Senator Claude Giroux. I'm going to be glued on this guy because I, people that – aren't hyped about Claude Giroux or people that say uh, he's overrated or he's too old or anything like that. What are you talking about? Are we watching the same player here? Like he puts up points so consistently. He, he was a staple of that Flyers franchise almost from the second he stepped in there and he's still got some juice in the tank. Ross, we're looking at in his last three games, six points. (laughs) Like it's, it's incredible what he can do. And he would just, he would change this Ottawa team so much. And I would even say if like we, we kind of chatted about the Fiala trade and uh, I'm going to assume it, if it came with an extension, it, you might need a first round pick and a roster player. Claude Giroux makes a lot more sense because you're getting a veteran guy that can help the leaders on this team. He knows what it takes to be a leader and you're getting him for free as a free agent signing. So I would actually say Claude Giroux is number one on my list to acquire simply because of the fact that he's a free agent. Why, why are you laughing? Did I say no, something dumb? No, noted NHL insider Sean Simpson three seconds ago just tweeted out, I just ran into Claude Giroux at Costco. He's already moved into his new Canada home. Said yep. playing in Ottawa would be a dream come true. Said Darcy Lowen was his favorite player growing up. He's hey, just, we can make dreams come true here in Ottawa. Let's go. Darcy, Darcy Lowen played two years with the Ottawa Senators from 92 to 94. He played... Uh, about 130 games, had four goals and 200 penalty minutes. That reminds me of Brady's favorite player, Barrett Jackman. What an answer. <laughs> Such a good answer. Yeah, Claude Giroux with 23 points in 18 games since joining yeah, the Florida Panthers. Very good. Very good. And the only player in NHL history to be a part of a 13-game losing streak and a 13-game winning streak with two different teams in the same <laughs> season he has congrats <laughs> philly had two 13 game losing streaks this year that's good. absolutely insane wow good to see Giroux doing well one block shot in 18 games though does he care enough yeah he certainly does sick vision great player would be awesome to see is tonight a scouting night we know that he's doing his due diligence on ottawa so wouldn't it be great for the Sens to have a good effort Tonight, I'm gonna to be lo- I'm gonna be looking out rather for Jonathan Huberto because I want to see what the hype's about. A lot of people have him in their ballot on the Hart Trophy. A lot of people are saying he's analytically. A lot of people are saying analytically, he's just not there. There's just better guys. So I want to see for myself. Let the old eye test answer that one. So I'm gonna be looking out for Jonathan Huberto. It would have been Anton Lundell. I really loved him going into the draft process. I wouldn't have even been mad with him at five. Like that's how much we for thought real? of him. And yep. he ended up going in the teens. I couldn't believe that he fell that far. But it just shows you how stacked that 2020 draft really was. So I'm going to go with the easy pickings there with uh, with Jonathan Huberto as we turn our attention to the Ottawa Senators. Pills, you want to run through the lines? So same lines as the New Jersey Devils. That's that's nice to get some consistency here. Other than Gustafson will get the start instead of Forsberg. So here we go. Top line. 
Brady Kachuk, Josh Norris, and Drake Batherson. You'll love to see it. Then Alex Formanton, Tim Stutzla, Adam Gaudet. A couple shorthanded offensive threats on that one. Parker Kelly, Dylan Gambrell, and Austin Watson. And then Chris Tierney, Mark Kastelik, and Scott Sabrin. Those are the forwards. Now heading to the decor. You got Shabbat with Hamannick, Brandstrom and Zub, and Nick Holden and Nikita Zaitsev. And as I mentioned, Philly franchise gets the start. 5 11 and 1 with a 352 goals against and an 893 save percentage, but he's looked a lot better in his last two starts. Who's your locked on player tonight for the Sens? Oh, you're handing it off so I can take the easy one again. I'm going Tim Stutzla. I mean, this guy is absolutely lighting it up. He had four points in his last game. I really hope that uh, he breaks another milestone here, Ross, and he continues to keep things going. Bit of a tougher task up against the Florida Panthers, but I can't keep my eyes off Timmy Superstar these days. Incredible. No, it really is incredible. When was uh, when was Gallagher's stupid comments? Feels like years ago. That guy's so forgettable. Jeez. Yeah, it really is. Um, it, so okay, so it was April fifth. Sit in the ten games since Gallagher had to speak his dumb little mind. Tim Stutzla has more goals in the ten games than Gallagher has all year in sixty. So let's just let that yeah. sink in. Fifteen points in his last ten games, and that happened, Pilsy, after a stretch where Timmy was already producing a three-game point streak. He's got 30 points in his last 25 games. He's playing over 19 minutes a night, and he is just absolutely clicking. So I love that for you, having him as your locked-on player for tonight's game. I'm I'm torn here because my heart wants me to say Brady because it's it's easy to, to follow the leader in a game where you're trying to woo a leader of another team here. So I think if Brady has a big night, it would be great. I think... It's important for the Sens to have a big night against Florida. The last time they played them was an absolute snoozer. They lost 3-0. They got dominated. What were the shots? Like 45-18. to 18. Yeah, like They got absolutely bad. smoked down in, in the Sunshine State. But this is their first time hosting Florida this year, I want to say. Or did no, they play them? The 8-2 game, wasn't that in Ottawa? In Florida. Oh, okay. Because remember, uh, Florida had like one, one home loss at that point. Right, yep. Or, they, or maybe even none. No, no, they, they had, yeah, that. yeah, but they were still at a point in the season that would have been on uh, December fourteenth was the game there, and I'm I'm just pulling in here if I go head to head results, Florida Panthers one one and one against them, so they already have played three times, so they did play in Ottawa, a forgettable game, I guess. I'm I'm trying to remember that game, and usually I'm all over that a four three shootout loss on Mar- March twenty sixth a month ago. <laughs> Oh, I don't remember that. it either, Ross. All right. Okay, so... Oh, shocker. Shocker. Barkov, shootout winner. That guy... Yep. Oh, That'll now happen. I remember that game. We talked about how Barkov's one of the best shootout guys in NHL history, and I read off, like... Remember we did the trivia of which Senators were, were the best shootout attempt guys? That was yep. right after the game I went to in Winnipeg. That was the 24th, then they came back, and that was the Saturday game. So Ottawa's 1-1-1 one, one, and one against the top team Go in the ahead. league right now. Uh, I'm going to go Brady. I was between nice. Brady or I was yeah. going to toss it up and I was going to go a twofer for the people. Uh, I was going to do Drake and for me because they're both battling to get to that 20 goal plateau. Of course, Drake doing it in about half the amount of games, but <laughs> follow the leader. Tonight's the night. Brady's got to get that 30th goal. 29. It needs to, it needs to click. And if it's not tonight, we know he scored his first NHL goal against the Philadelphia Flyers. He scored True. his second NHL yes. goal against the Flyers, both in the same game. So I'm confident he hits 30 either way. But let's not leave it to the last minute. Let's get 30 tonight for Brady. You can to do show. it at home. Do it at home. Get yeah. the Frank the Tank out. We haven't seen Frank the Tank in a little while. So True. let's get let's get him out. Three primary assists, though. If he wants to be a disher, ooh, by all means, buddy, be a disher. What's your key to victory tonight against Florida? I I don't have much here, Ross. Like this, <laughs> this team is so damn good. Like I I don't see a scenario where the Sens beat them, even with all those players rested, because this Sens lineup matched up against that Panthers lineup. Not much of a chance here. If I'm given something, just get pucks on net. Like I, <laughs> that's it. Like you can't. Like don't be fancy. You're not gonna get 
great scoring opportunities. Just try to get some greasy goals, some tips, some deflections, crash the net. Not a whole lot of optimism from me here in tonight's game, Ross. No, I'm the, sorry. The odds are are not as bad as I thought they could be. Let's the Sens them. money line is plus 187. Like, I don't like what? the value on that at all. Yeah, I, I was thinking 200 at least. Yeah, it's minus 209 for, for the Panthers to win. I guess it's because they're on the road and the Sens are on a four-game win streak. I could see it, but I don't love the value there at plus 187. I'll just say grind it out. Don't. Don't let Florida make this a meaningless game. Play with emotion. Play with intensity. It's fan appreciation night for Ottawa, so you know they're going to have a little extra uh, pump in their step. And why not? I mean, if you can make it so a team doesn't win the President's Trophy, do what you can. So uh, I'm fully on board that it's going to be a solid game tonight. And I want to see the fifth straight helmet get handed out, man. It's been on on an absolute road. Zub needs a helmet. Uh, like, if Zub goes the entire season without getting it... Go earn it, then. Yeah. You gotta earn it. You gotta earn it. I, I'm gonna actually pull this up and shout out uh, Lo- Lock Sends Monster. Is that what it is? Yeah. At Sends Monster on... Uh, <laughs> what a solid <laughs> name, eh? Yeah. Uh, so, he's been doing the, the helmet leaderboard. So, I'm gonna pull it up right now here on, uh, on our YouTube channel. Again, we're free and available wherever you get your podcast, but we love seeing that subscription number rise on YouTube. We are ever so close to 2000 and that's Mm going to be a nice jumping off point for us. And here's, here's the power rankings right now, the helmet leaderboard and that Gambrelman was from the game against the Florida Panthers. If I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken though. Cause you know what I am because Nick Holden got it that one. It was safety first uh, in that one. But why does it feel like it was in Florida that they did? Anyways, Maybe it was. You know what? We can't, <laughs> we can't get everything perfect on here, but that goal, no, no. that's when uh, he, he was looking for a helmet that would fit, and then he goes out and scores on the power play. I, I want to say it was in Florida, but whatever. Um, then we've got Tim Stutzla and Josh Norris tied with four helmets each. Cool. Murray, Shabbat, Forsberg, Watson, and Alex Formanton with two each, and then a whole host of players with just one. But you mentioned it. There is no Artem Zub on that list, so it would be great to see him get one as well. Yeah, definitely. So uh, let's let's have a good game from Zoop. All right. And if you're looking to support the show even more, we'd love if you want to get involved oh, with yeah. our Scent Central Citizen t-shirts. Pillsy made some deliveries along the 401 yesterday on his way back. Absolutely love to see that. And we're going to keep this train rolling here. We still got a number of shirts. We're about to break even, which will be a huge boost for us. We want this to be for fans, by fans. So if you want to support the pod, shoot us a DM on Twitter at Send Central on Instagram locked on dot senators or on YouTube leave a comment leave a leave a note you can also hit the business inquiry email as well if you would like to advertise with locked on senators for your business Pilsy any final notes today go sends go all right enjoy the final home game of the senators yes. regular season it's sad to say but Next year, it's got to be the year, buddy, right? It's got to be the year next year that they take a real step forward. The Ottawa Senators are 15, 21, and 4 on home ice in 2021-2022. They have won, though, four in a row overall, and they'll look to extend that to five. We'll catch us on the postcast after tonight's game. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.